Bezrat Hashem, so we continue. Pasuk Yud Gimel. So we've addressed the different types of wicked people. Yeah. Which essentially is the Yetzerara, yes. That can also approach a man in different ways. And we will see that uh, uh, soon, Be'ezrat Hashem. And now the, the Pasuk continues and says, Kol hon yaka, Pasuk Gimel, Kol hon yaka nimsa. All the treasures, we will, the precious, precious treasures, nimsa, we will find. We will find. We will acquire. But metzi'ah, lashon metzi'ah, is to find something. It's some, when you find something unexpectedly. Nemale baitenu shalal. And we will fill our homes with all the, with the loot. Yes, with all the, 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 the the, the gains of what we stole, what we took. So the, the, the gown explains, Kolhon Yakar Nimsa, he says we're talking about the category, the type of wicked that kill in the roads. And the definition of nimsa, of finding, is accurate in the sense that this is a type of individual that is willing to kill, that is willing to kill, that is willing to steal, but is scared to be found, to be identified. So when you kill someone and steal from someone when he's on the road, he's far away from his city, he's far away from his uh, social uh, network. People don't know him. And usually the, the, these people that are stealing also are not people that are known or identifiable to the, the the area, the people of the area. So that's Kolohon Yakar Nimsa. We're gonna find people on the road. And we we know which type of people, right? We're talking about the Tamim, the 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 the, the, the simple-minded one that walks around with his wealth and prays and share and shows it. So those wicked people go, take those people, will kill them, and take their goods. And now, why is it because it's called a mitzia? Why is it considered something that you find that has uh, no repercussions? It's because it's far away from everybody. There's no way to relate, nor the people, nor the me, the goods, uh, or not the the wicked people themselves. And this is why it's called Hon Yakar. Precious, precious treasures. Because you don't even, you don't really, you don't really know what you're about to get. These are the ones that steal on the road, but do not kill. So this is not a mitzvah. This is not something you find. Why? 
because the people are there, you didn't kill them. So there is a way for them to inquire what's going on, what happened, who did what. So it's called a shalal, it's called a loot. It's called a loot. And the Gaon explains you have a type of people that are interested or interested or that need or that are, that are that are going and ready to hurt others but they're cowards they don't be identified they don't want any traces left they don't want any relations to them this is the first part and because they're so they're so uh, weak they have no problem killing just so that nobody can point point the finger at them what does that mean the gown explains and he says that sometimes people behave a certain way and they're willing to shame right if you shame someone, if you belittle someone in the public, it's as if you kill them, right? You're spilling his blood. Explains to Gaon that if you're able to hurt someone to the point where you're you're kind of killing him, then that cause that leads to the ability to kill is mixed and intertwined with the weakness and, sh and shamefulness that you're not able to 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 uh, to own your actions. So you will go as far as killing just so that nobody point their fingers at you. The second part, the second portion, this is more of a, of a place of need. It's someone that feels that he needs so much that he's willing to steal and take a risk that maybe, maybe they might find the person, right? Most likely they won't be able to, but th there is a chance when, to the contrary of the first cat, right? Of the first part of the pasuk, that if a person goes and, and kills everybody and doesn't leave a trace of a, of a witness, finish, it's done, it's gone, finish. Says the Gaon, it's usually from a place of need. That, we, that comes from what? that comes from the jealousy, that comes from the ta'avot, from the desires. So what the Gaon brings forward here is two different versions of, on one end, ka'as, and on the other, ta'ava. The version of ka'as is the weakness the shame of being found, the weakness of owning your own actions that can lead to killing a coward. 
And the other that comes from a ta'ava yields a, or leads to a place of need. So this is the rational the rationale, okay, that comes with the mida. The midata kaas will lead to killing for because of the rationale. I cannot be found. I cannot be identified. And the the mida of the of the ta, of, of the ta'ava and jealousy and envy comes with the rationale of I need. Therefore, it's okay to steal and take and take a limited risk. These are versions of the Yetzirah in a person also. When a person interacts with somebody else, and sometimes stealing doesn't mean come with a gun and taking away, right? Uh, it can mean uh, when you hear somebody is doing something and you go and you steal it from him. And, you know, there's many, many versions of stealing this game. But usually the gown tells us, Shlomo Amir tells us that when somebody comes and acts from a, from a place of need or from a place of cowardice and, and, and weakness, that will be the rationale for him to hurt somebody else. Good. Pasuk yud dalet. Goralecha tapil betochenu. Your portion, your part, your stake. Bring it with us. Kis echad yelekunanu. We will all have one pot. We all have one pot. Says the Gaon. Goralecha tapil betochenu, your portion, your part, you will, you will carry with us, amongst us. Tapil, you will put it with us. He's referring to the, to the category of person that goes and kills someone in his own house. Now, to the, to, the, to the difference of the one that kills in the road, a person that goes into someone's house and kills, he's not scared that at the end people can find him, right? Because he went into the person's house. So there's people that know him, People that will inquire, that will identify what happened, witnesses, right? When he's on the road, there's no witnesses. Here, there's witnesses. So the 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 busha, the weakness, the shame, right? The rationale that we discussed in Pasuk Yudgimel does not apply on this category. Goralecha tapil betochenu, your portion, you will get with us. You will put with us. Says says the says the Gaon. When a person goes and steals, or when a group of individuals go into a home and kill the individuals and steal whatever is inside, they they, they think they know what's really in the house. Okay, unless it's, they know exactly what they're going for. But usually they go and whatever there there is, they take. Now, how are you going to split the goods? There's, there's art, there's jewelry, there's silverware, there is, I don't know what, yes? Clothes. Eh? Now, you cannot identify a real price to it, right? So there's more or less of a value. And then the people, the, the, the people get together. And then they, uh, they do a goral. They do a... They split it, but uh, they like... Uh, 
how you call it, the Gorali is that you split it. Like a lottery, like a lottery. Uh, this piece, one, two, three, papa, and we, we do it, and whoever wins it, wins it. That's what the Pasuk says, Goral Echad Tapil Betochenu. You throw it with us. But also it means Goral Echad is your mazal. Throw your mazal with us. Connect your mazal to us. Kis Echad Yele Lekulanu. If you go and you steal from someone, That's on the road. That's the other category. Usually people, they don't carry uh, all their, they usually they carry their money at the time. They used to carry their money. So what are you gonna find? You're gonna find money. So that's what it says. Let's make one pot and let's hold on to all these goods. The gown says why. Because since we stole from the person and we didn't kill him, he's going to start inquiring. Okay. Sorry, again, let, let me try. Kis Echad Yele Kulanu is talking about stealing from a person in his home. And not kill. Because just stealing from the road we, stole, we spoke about it in the last pasuk. Now, what happens? You stole from the person, yes, but you didn't kill him. Now, for sure, the person is going to go to, to the police. He's going to he's going to start inquiring. So, the first thing you need to do, if you're if you're the robbers, what do you do? You hold on to the goods and you hide them and you wait for the heat to pass, right? You cannot use it right away. So he says. Whatever we steal from that person, we will keep, hold on to, and whatever we can use, we will use. Let's make one pot. That's the pasuk. Explains the gaon. The purpose, the purpose of the yetserara, the purpose of the of of the of the people, is really to steal. Is really to take from the other, to hurt. Not so. Not there's there's ways of doing it. You do it by hurting a little bit, by hurting a lot, by killing with chutzpah, by force, with more tact and 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 psychology. Maybe by talking, you know, by convincing the guy. Sometimes you do it softly, and the guy he doesn't realize as he's opening the door to chaos. But the, the common denominator is always to take. It's always to take. The question is how and how aggressively will the, the person will take. Meaning, like, let's go back to the essence of the of the hatayim. People that do not have mitzvot ase, people that are empty from yirat shamayim. By default, those are people that are going to be around just to take. Now, once, once they start their manipulative approach, depending on the, uh, on the, on the levels like we, 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 we've addressed, they will find their way of taking. It will be soft. It will be hard. It will be tough. It will be easy. Now, says the, says the Gaon, we find four types of Yetzirah that are born from, again, from the two roots of the, one is the Ta'ava, the desire, the other one is the Kaas. Again, he goes back to it. Now, he's taking the four types of Reshaim that are surrounding us, and trying to hurt and finding its root, the root of all four, 
and connecting it to the Yetzara that's within us. Meaning that we have two types of hataim, of, of wicked people, of individuals that we have to be careful of and that we have to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to deal with. On one end is the physical people around us. And how does it start? Yirat shamayim, mitzvot, or no? No, emptiness, emptiness, okay. Identifying. So that person, if he's getting close to me and he's putting efforts, is because he wants to take from me. The question is how and what? How? Does he have me data kaas or does he have envy? Kaas, this is how dangerous it is. Envy, that's how dangerous it is, right? Which approach will he take? Will he be aggressive or will, will he be manipulative with words and actions, right? And the Gaon tells us that if, and Gaon, Shlomo Amelech tells us, you need to be proactively aware and careful of these people around you all the time. Now, the Gaon takes it one step deeper into the process and says, we find that those four categories also exist within each and every individual. And he says the following, that we have the root, two roots. One is the desire, one is the cause, and each split into two. He says, the one that's, that envy and desires, the biggest threat of that ta'ava is to the own person. When you envy and you desire, you're mostly dangerous to yourself than you are to others. Good? It's clear. The cast anger, anger, you're more dangerous to others than you are to yourself. But that you destroy yourself. But you're, you're much more destructive with others than you are with yourself. We, see, we saw it in, in Bereshit, right? With Cain and Hevel. That was, you see, people murder from chaos immediately. And Correct. We, probably the Correct. reason we don't we don't murder today is just because of society, but not because it's not something that you would naturally do when you're angry. Correct. 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 So those are the the, 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 the roots, right? So so one, the ta'ava ends up hurting the person himself, chaos hurting others. And both now have split into two. He says there is two approach. There is the immediate approach, the reactional approach, and then there is the more thought of approach, the more calculated approach, right? So you have the chaos that can be reactive or calculated. And then you have the ta'ava, the desire, the envy that is all reactive or calculated. And he explains, but the ta'ava, the desire. Sometimes a person is, everything is okay. Suddenly the desire kicks into him and yeah, he wants something. He has a desire that it's uncontrollable. Moment of, of, of weakness, a moment of, uh, of uh, lack of clarity, and boom, and he falls for it. Right? That's react reactive. That's reactive. The second one, he starts looking at certain things, at certain people. You see, it's not that bad that to have this. It's not so bad to have that. Look, this is how, this is how you're hashuv. This is how you're, 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 you're look up to. This is how you're important. This is, it's actually great. The Yetzirah starts 
building a case, building a case. And slowly, slowly, you think that you're in control, but in reality, the rationale and the process already swallowed you. Until the person falls for it. Good. That's from the root of desire. From the root of anger, from of chaos. So clearly, there is a uh, there is a uh, a uh, an issue. The guy gets upset, reacts, boom, chaos. Pitom, that's reactional, right? Somebody, I don't know, does something bad, you don't think, and you react. That's easy. What is the definition of reactive anger? Beautiful, says again. He says, if you don't give the opportunity or the time to the victim to be able to protect or respond to your action. That's the definition of a reactive anger, reactional anger. And he says, this individual is ra. Imagine, you react out of anger to a situation without giving the opportunity to the other person to react, respond, or plea. This is called ra. It's a very, very, very strong terminology that the, the gun is using. Especially because how many times do we react to situations and we don't, and, and, and sometimes we say words and we hurt, we hurt. And it's reactional. It's out of anger and we don't think, but we hurt the person. At that moment, says the Gaon, a person brings upon himself a darkness that is called Ra. And then you have the manipulator, which is the person who has this anger in him, but it's cultivated. And it's how do I bring this person to fail? How do I bring this person to get hurt? And there's a, a plot that the person puts into action to hurt the person. And that's the Lashon Mirma. Mirma. We're going to see it more in Michelin. That was also in, uh, in the daily. Huh? Sheker and Mima. We see That's right. That's right. So the Mima, the Ramot, is to manipulate, to, uh, to, uh, to con, to con someone. How many times, how many times people, people, so whether it's, and, and for, again, with the right rationale or thinking that would they are allowed to, to, ah, you know, that guy hurt me 20 years ago. Now is my time to hurt back. I deserve it. He deserves to be punished. I'm, I, it's a mitzvah. They make it that Torah themselves, yes? And they react sometimes in sure. I, I, I don't know when I would, uh, somebody told me how, there was a case and they threw somebody out of shul and then and, and, and it was a big thing. Sometimes people don't realize that the reaction, the reaction brings ra la olam. Brings ra la olam. 
the Chachamim in the Musar tell us, Ba'alei Musar tell us that if you are angry with a child and you raise your hand on the child or you scare the child out of anger without a calculated chinuch, he's a rasha. Now, it's not that the, 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 the patch is wrong or that the recommendation is wrong. It's the way that it's done that is wrong. This is how the Gaon identifies, identifies the threat, the threat that surrounds us all the time, and that we have to live with. The ka'as, the ta'ava, the rational of each, the strategy of each. So you have the root, which is ka'as and ta'ava. Then you have the rationale of it, which is vulnerability, cowardness, fear, versus in, in ka'as, or no fear, in ta'ava, the need, I need it, or the desire, or I want it, and then the approach, the two different approach. Is it reactional, or is it strategized and organized? This is the structure of the two, let's say, pillars but the two linear uh, structures of the Yetzarim, of the Ra, that we have to deal with and that we have to be careful each and every day. We'll stop here because then now Pasuk Tedvav is going to jump into Beni Al Telech Beterech Itam, Menarag Lecham in Etivatam, and then he's going to start giving us the Musar. Why? We shouldn't go, we shouldn't follow, and how to, how to protect ourselves from all this negativity and, 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 and threat. And we were mekayem u'blech techa baderech, learning Torah even shanachnu l'chim baderech, shebezrat Hashem yeh kol abrachot, וכל הישועות, בעזרת השם, ושהקדוש ברוך הוא יקבל תפילותינו, והשתדלותינו ברחמים וברצון. אמן, אמן, אמן. רבא, why do you think שלמה המלך starts with such an extreme example like murder? אה, it's a, אוקיי. it's a very good question, but let's go back to the beginning, כן? What does he tell you? Mishle Shlomo ben David Melech Yisrael Adat Chochma U Musar Le'adin Im Rebina Lakad Musar Askel Nachon Le'atet Petaim Orma Le'na'ar Da'at Rizima Start listening. He follows the path. He wants to give you the golden path, right? How, now, what did, Shlomo, what did David Melech tell us? Sur Mera Va'asetor Get away from the Ra in order to do the good. So until he, he doesn't identify to you the threat, whatever you will build in good, if you haven't identified the threat, will allow the threat to grow with the good. You have to start with the end of the threat. You need to identify the threat, create the awareness, build a protection from the threat in order to be able to give room for the good to grow, right? When you when you when you prepare a land to 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 uh, to uh, to grow something in it, you make sure that you take away all the bad uh, the bad uh, the bad grass, right? You clean the land and then you allow it to, to grow. That's the surmera va'asetov. The same thing Rabbi Rucham tells us. You want to overcome, you want to allow your neshama, you want to allow your da'a to exist, you need to refrain, you refrain from react, being reactional emotionally and instinctively. 
if you always have the instinct in the mix, you can really never give room to your dot to take full splendor and shine purely. So it's the same thing. We need to identify the Ra so that we can do Sur Mera and then Va'asetov. So now we, we identified the Ra. Now we're going to go into the Sur Mera. And after that, the asset of Be'ezrat Hashem. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All too.